This is the Zazda, gotta love that name, model PP700SA PCP air pistol. And I bought mine for under 200 pounds. Stranger things happen when you're filming the intro. You can see just how good the Zazda, gotta love that name, is. I've got about, what, eight or nine under my thumb at 10 yards freehand. This little pocket rocket comes from the Snow Peak factory in China, and I think it's bargain of the year. Watch on. This video contains a review of a pellet rifle. It's powered entirely by compressed air and uses no gunpowder and must not be confused with any form of tactical firearm and my targets are paper and tins. Always shoot safely and show consideration to others around you. <sighs> now, let's be honest, whoever thought up the name for this pistol clearly went down the internet list of the most unwanted names available and went, we'll have that one. Zazda. In the box, you get the pistol, you get an instruction manual, and you get some spares. But the instruction manual does sort of relate to the earlier model version of this pistol. So you've got to sort of take the specifications with a pinch of salt. But the basic important stuff of how to use the pistol is still correct. You charge the pistol using the probe provided, and you connect that probe to either a bottle or a pump and you're gonna fill the gun to around 220 bar. Now, it's a PCP, so it's not CO2. Once you've done that, you simply, to load the gun, rotate the breech at the back like that, put the pellet in, and then you simply slide that back. You pull the hammer back, and you pull the trigger and shoot at whatever you wanna shoot at. The Zazda, gotta love that name, is around 36 centimeters long, and it weighs around 2.4 pounds. The bit on top here is like a cut aluminium block, nicely finished, and you've got that nicely finished cylinder there as well. The pistol grip is plastic, even though it's sculpted. It's okay, but it's not competition standard. Earlier versions didn't have this square sculpting. This version though is updated. You've got open sights on the top that are adjustable for windage at the back. The gun is a pre-charged pneumatic pistol, so it's not powered by CO2, it's powered by air. So it's like having a mini air rifle in your hand, except for the power. In the UK, the legal limit for a pistol with a rifled barrel is six foot pounds, or with a 15.9 grain JSP pellet in 2.2, which is what this is, that's around 411 feet per second. Now, Outside the UK, this will, I'm told, run up to around nine foot pounds or 500 feet per second. My UK version is legal, barely legal. I'm getting around 50 shots from one charge and that's running at around 395 feet per second or five and a half foot pounds. However, at the end of the charge, the power spikes and it goes up. In fact, at 406 feet per second, I started to panic and took the pistol grip off and wound the power back a bit. So by undoing this screw head here, what I'm doing is reducing the tension on the hammer spring just there, which means that when you pull the trigger, the hammer isn't gonna hit the valve quite so hard, which means you get less air out from the gun, which reduces the power. The Zazdar pistol, gotta love that name, has some sort of regulation system going on in it just around there. And I think that when the cylinder gets to a low pressure, possibly it's letting a bit of air through, which is what makes that power spike. Now, I don't think Mr. or Mrs. Snowpeak are going to be making changes to that feature anytime in the future. But if you're an out of work gunsmith that's been making guns all your life and are expert at everything gun and now work for the water board, there is a chance that you could probably disassemble this and do some magical things with it. However, I'm not going to. 
I'm just going to accept what it is. The trigger is adjustable and I did adjust mine. As I said before, you've got that rail on top for adding some sights and I would put a sight on top because you're gonna get a lot more out of this pistol. Those open sights will only take you so far. It's a Hawk red dot. Other red dots are available. You don't have to spend the money that I have, um, but it will drastically improve what the pistol can do for you. And it's that simple. <laughs> when you put the red dot on the top and rest the gun, it just becomes so accurate. It's quite weighty at the front when you point it forward. So after 10 yards, I would always recommend resting this. And for testing, I've obviously benched the gun to show you the best accuracy that it can give but they do do extending stock options just here. So you might be able to get something that's a little bit more comfortable for you. But the great thing is this is so portable. You can put it in your bag or your backpack or your bedside table. It's really easy to store, but, and there is a big but, there is no safety on it. Once that hammer is back, that gun is gonna go bang. There's no safety. So you have to be aware of that fact. I don't know what the working life of the gun is. I've gone through about two tins of pellets with it so far, and it's still sturdy and working just fine. Will it still be working in two years time? No idea, but they do give you a bag of spares in the box. I, I gotta be honest, it's Chinese made. People out there want to say it's Chinese, it's no good, well that's wrong. It's really, really good. At 15 yards then, I'm holding up there to get my group down there, and that is with the open sights. And I haven't adjusted those out of the box, I've just sort of practiced and found where it's going. But I'm going to put something on the top which may actually help improve the already excellent accuracy of this little pistol. So by putting a red dot on top of my Zazdar, still love that name, I've gone from holding up here to get a group down here, quite a big group, to holding on the bullseye and getting five just to the left of it. Now you don't have to use a Hawk red dot, there are lots of other budget red dots out there, but clearly it's going to make a difference with this pistol. I've brought my ruler because that doesn't look right somehow, does it? Those extra 10 yards have given me a four and a half centimetre drop and a little bit to the left, but I've still got four, yes, one just outside, but four within half an inch. That surprises me. Now granted, to get that group, I am shooting off a rest, just like that. And I know you're gonna be screaming out there, free hand, free hand. All right, let's try a bit of freehand. Let's be honest, the stance I'm using is completely unconventional and probably not to some sort of championship rules, but it is working. Well, it was until I fired that one. Shooting standing at 15 yards then with Mizazdar, gotta love that name. If I'm shooting sort of like that, they're going a bit everywhere. If I shoot off my arm, rested, there are a lot more tighter groups. And I've actually got one, and I think there's two in there. That's three in the bullseye. Well, after a little bit of trial and error, I'm holding about there. I'm so determined to try and capture this for you. 50, I've put this together. Oh, <laughs> a shot. So accuracy on the Zazdar, gotta love that name, is absolutely incredible. I didn't think it would be as good as it was. And remember, I paid less than 200 pounds for it. 
and I bought mine from Bristol Air Guns. Now I bought it because I was at the braces of Bristol range and someone there had one and they showed it to me and I was impressed. So I went and got one. So just remember, less than 200 quid, that's equivalent of 200 packets of Jaffa Cakes. Now, they say that's a cake. It's not really a cake, is it? It's a biscuit. And it's like in America, you call things biscuits when actually they're like buns. The world's gone mad, I tell you. That's a biscuit, and that's incredibly accurate. Good biscuit. I'm going to eat all of them in a minute. 